Hello once again and welcome to the show. My name's Rovent. This is Do All The Things. And if you've been following the comedy, you might be aware that I build computers for people sometimes. And often when I do, it's because a musician buddy approaches me and they want a DAW, a digital audio workstation, pretty much a recording computer. Sure enough, I've been approached by another buddy for just this task, except the difference is this time, this buddy who doesn't know that that much about computers bought a bunch of the parts himself and gave them to me to assemble. So he's dropped this on me. Yeah, sexy. <laughs> well, uh, l let's see if we can get this sorted. So yeah, we just have a big bin here of haphazardly Loyolo bombed components just kind of jammed in there and uh, well, he, he he was apologetic. He's like, I, I hope you can figure out how to put it together. Like, I don't remember where all the screws go. Yeah, it's like two different kinds of screws in a computer, so it shouldn't be a problem. But either way, uh, let's tear into this. We got this here, crazy drive bay rack, uh, dark rock cooler, 190 TDP. Should be good enough for what he's got planned. Box O stuff says it's for DVD writer. Uh, gonna have to see what's in there. Oh, a Western Digital one terabyte blue. That's kind of um, not how we do things in serious systems, but it should be good. Says it's gonna start them off till we can afford something better and bigger. Ah, I guess that's the front panel. That's a lovely little power switch right there. Just if you blink, you miss it. It's right beside the reset, but okay, the reset's not too easy to press. Ah, USB 3 at least. And then the main feature. Well, hopefully the motherboard hasn't been damaged, just checkering that all in there like that. Uh, let's take a look at this thing first, because this is one thing that stood out to me right quick that didn't make any sense. This hard drive mounting solution, I guess. Oh, that comes out like that. Okay, but wait, that's the wrong side except he implied that you're supposed to be able to pull it out the front or the other side right here. And it's kind of like, well, how does that happen? It's built on flex. So if we put an actual drive in there, how does it go in? Yeah, this mounting solution doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Oh, I guess we have to take this thing out so that they slide in and out. Oh, okay, we'll make it work. What's in here? Oh, it's the processor. Okay. Oh, it came from Silver Dart Mississauga. We know what that means. It came from China. Direct from China. So hopefully the motherboard didn't get damaged, just kind of jammed in there like that. So as I understand, this is an X99 board, not X299. He bought this a couple years ago, got what he felt was a good deal for it, not realizing it was probably a good deal because uh, it was a bit obsolete at the time. Like this, he bought this when X299 was the thing. So I guess it's an older board. Where is the part number? Ah, an X99A Raider. Either way, like he had the right idea getting a hardcore workstation board for his hardcore workstation. It'd be nice if this was a modular power supply. But as I understand, he at least got a gold rated power supply. It's supposed to be new. It says Valens. No idea who that is. Got a couple 80 mil fans on the rear here. Probably generic. And our RAM is looking awfully underpopulated. Corsair Vengeance LPX, DDR4, 16, oh, oh, two eights. I saw 16, oh, we got 32 gigs. Kind of be a waste uh, not spreading it out. Like this is quad channel, right? So we need at least four sticks in the long run. 16, 16, 16, 39 of 2400 megahertz. Not the most powerful RAM, but hey, uh, as long as it performs well and gets the job done. This isn't a hardcore gaming rig or anything. It's debatably more power than he's gonna need anytime soon for recording. That all depends on how many VSTs you like to rip, right? So that means the processor. One year vor warranty void if erased. From who? China? An i7-6850K. I do recall helping him pick out this processor. We were trying to figure out what would be compatible. And he was in a position where when he bought this board, he found that the processors were too damn expensive. But now, a couple of years later, like yeah, he bought this board like two years ago. <laughs> a couple years later, when he's finally ready to finish the build, oh, well, the processors are cheaper now. It's already gotten a bit dusty. Does this guy have a cat? We're gonna have to take this all apart and redo it. All right, what's in the box? Is there stuff in here? 
We got manuals. That is the biggest motherboard manual I've ever seen. Uh, well, it's multi-language, so. Oh, it's a Rosewill Valence, 80 plus gold. Okay, I think Rosewill's supposed to be okay. I know people have used them because they're cheaper and haven't heard any complaints. Oh, he has provided me an entire package of UL listed zip ties, nice. More documentation, be quiet. An SLI bridge, oh, okay. Uh, I guess he unboxed the cooler already. Are these the screws he was talking about? He says he has all the screws for this case. We got some strange standoffy guys here. I think I see where they go. Low pro bracket for the video card, front handles. He wanted a um, rack mount case to fit in with all his recording gear. Cause you know, some studios situations, they have, a, they have racks. More screws. They look like they go with the cooler. Ooh, power cable. Ah, he got a fresh tube of Arctic silver. I wonder if that came with the cooler or if he actually made a point to buy this, which is kind of smart. Like most DIYers might not think to pick up a tube of uh, cooling goo. Well, that's all I'm really seeing of relevance in this box. He says he had all the screws and an SSD. Surely there's more screws to the case than this. Where's the SSD? There's supposed to be an M2 SSD with this. We should check this box since stuff has been changed. Nope, no SSD in there. Are those 140s? Oh boy, that thing's a unit. I'm sure that will do the job of cooling that wicked Intel core processor quite nicely. This looks pretty sweet. He warned me that this cooler is probably not going to fit inside the case with the cover on. Huh. It looks like it just, just, just won't. Stock at least. He asked if it's possible that I can cut a hole in the top of the case so we can get the cover on. But it looks like if we just take the shroud off the top of this cooler, we might be able to pack it all in there. Like if we look at this and we assume the cooler sits right about there, I'm not sure if you can see how tight those tolerances are, but like just, 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 just to say that with a little fitting and adjustment, we'll be able to get the cover on. Thermally managing this might be a bit tricky though. Oh, it looks like I gotta shoot a message there because I'm not seeing an SSD here. I can't really get this computer running without an SSD, can I? All right, I've gotten her all apart and so I can uh, bench test her and start assembly. Forgot to point out the video card as decent. A two gig should run some good monitor. He doesn't really need a video horsepower for what he's planning on doing. So this is uh, perfectly adequate. Oh, it's so fresh. Guess it matches the board. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get the processor on there. According to the manual, these are the right positions for the RAM, so that's good to go. Oh, this one first and that one. I'm not quite used to these things. Remove. Hopefully it didn't get dust in there too. All right, so where's our index? We got our little platino there. Drop it in just like this. Should inspect, there's nothing wrong with this socket. I guess socket looks good. Why does it say one, one? Alrighty then. That one goes down and that one goes down. Huh, there's a lot of flex on that. Are we sure we got the right processor here, bud? Now it appears for mounting the cooler. We have these little standoff dealies that have to go in the four corners here. I just gotta snug them up with my tiny adjustable wrench. Ah, apparently you don't lose these things. Keep it safe, bra. Oh, how does it fit in here? Oddly enough, no. Yeah, I just noticed they give you a little wrench for doing this. Oh, how cute. But the angle is kind of wonky. And this wrench is chintzy. A lot of cute little bits of hardware this comes with. Almost want to be like, bro, can I keep the spare crap? I don't know why they call that upside when it's clearly the downside. I just get these puppers screwed in here. Oh, let's just confirm. Yeah, this all seems legit. Wait, do we gotta use these little nuts? Do we gotta bolt that down? Oh boy, this is the silliest installation of a cooler I've done in a while. I'll tell you then, let's give it a little squirtsy squirtsy. Oh, warranty void and, and as soon as you, oh wow. The warranty void if removed is just cheap ink that comes right off while trying to prep for installation. Th that's wonderful. That's absolutely wow. Sure enough, it does come with goo. Wonder what's better, this or the Arctic Silver? Well, if he went and bought this posh solution, we might as well use it. I've used Arctic Silver lots. It's, f oh, it's really runny. Guaranteed someone's like, you're doing it wrong. That should squish out nicely. Okay, so clearly we can't bolt it down with the fan in place. <laughs> These little, 
these little nuts into place. Might actually have to remove the ram too to get in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With the little wrench. We're gonna be here all day. Make sure you do it even. Don't tighten uh, one side down all at once. All right, that cooler should be on there now. Let's get the ram back into place. This fan looks nice and thin. So hopefully we can adjust it down a bit. Yeah, that way it'll be easier to clear the case. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting it like not as high as it was before. Cause I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking the top off that cooler. And the fan should cool just as adequately from this position. See, same height as just under the cooler shroud now. Put all this spare hardware away. Why is there like one single solitary black screw of this type in here? The cooler does come with brackets to mount another fan if you want push-pull. All right, so now with the basic facilities in place, it's time to do the obligatory pre-build post-test. So, where's our front panel? All right, let's flick on some power here, sir. And... Wow, that fan's really spun low. So far, no post. Oh, I got a green light. CPU or memory changed. Press F1. I suppose we're gonna have to go get a keyboard. Man, that's super quiet so far. They call it be quiet for a reason or is just the uh, fan curves in this uh, ultra optimized? So that's great. We shouldn't need the fan to ever spin any more than that with just light use. All right, F1 to run setup. All right, what do we got here, bud? 3.6, 100 megahertz CP ratio, blah, 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 blah. This is a fancy looking BIOS. XMP on. I think you know it. Game boost. I don't know about that. CPU, memory. I guess it doesn't really need XMP, 24 megahertz. 16 gigs of frig all. Storage, there's no storage right now. Fan info. Yeah, looks like there are curves programmed in. CPU temps only 33 degrees Celsius. So it looks like we have some intelligent control on here. CPU fan one, CPU, there's two CPU fan headers on this. Yeah, there is. That's sweet. We might be able to use that second header to, well, I like to synchronize it with a case fan that might directly work with the CPU fan. Like if there was a 120 at the back, I would put that on the CPU fan header, the CPU opt header, so that it synchronizes with the CPU fan and it just creates a nice regulated flow. However fast this is spinning is how fast this spinning just goes right out the case. Uh, that depends on the design of the case though. Oh yeah, we can program the fan settings right in here. That's great. Assuming we don't have software that we can program this with. Hopefully that means we can program those case fans so that they're not friggin' ripping. LAN option ROM, no HD audio controller. Does he need the audio on this? He might never use the onboard audio, so we might actually disable that. Disable that. <laughs> HCI, yep. Is this really all we got here? Oh no, advanced, F7. Whoa, okay. I'm not familiar with this BIOS. I'm used to ASUS. SATA hot plug, that's good. We're gonna need those features. We have OC settings. I don't know if this processor, well, it's an i7 rated. It should be unlocked. Yeah, it's an i7K. So we're not really gonna overclock it. This is a, a workstation for stability. That and I don't know how to overclock an i7 X series. There's all sorts of me memory, try it. That's hilarious. You know, we probably could get this uh, memory to go up to 3200 or 3000 at least. But again, probably not gonna bother. Why do they have a turbo setting for 3D Mark 2001 and XP? Who's running Windows XP and 3D Mark 2001 on an X99? That must have other purposes I'm not aware of. So if I recall correctly, it says six core. So I guess it's six core, 12 thread. That should serve them reasonably well. Board Explorer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I guess it's gonna give you a layout or something? Oh man, we've come a long way since frickin', you know, the little blue screens from the uh, Pentium days. 2016 this is. So yeah, system's a little bit dated already. We're save and exit. Quit without save, no. Is that, that it there? No, that's profile. What's F12 screenshot? Okay, that's hilarious. Where's uh, save and exit? This guy? There it is. And of course, there's nothing really else to do now. She posts. That's all that matters. So we are good and we can proceed with the build. 
Any changes that have to be made can be uh, made afterwards. Like for instance, the M2 slot all the way down here in the back nine. We're gonna be able to access that easily enough once I get it off him. He swears he puts it in the box, but he says yes, he might have forgotten it. So I'm gonna be getting it from later today. Often that's something you have to put in first because it goes, you know, it jams up into here and between the video card, the cooler, you're gonna have a hard time getting at it, especially if it has an integral heat sink. All right, so the standoffs are already installed and tight and I've cleaned up on this. Pretty much, we could install the board now if we want. I guess we can get the power supply in. Fitment of this is a bit touchy, so don't tighten them all down at once. Now the power supply in this particular case, like it looks like it goes in one way, but this entire plate seems to come out and then you can switch stuff around. This case has interesting modularity to it. Now it's already oriented the right way so that we have our uh, power supply sucking air out. <sighs> Gotta figure out where we wanna route these guys. There's a sys fan up here and a sys fan down there. Ah, uh, I'm seeing trickery. I gotta pull the board out. When I see opportunities to do stuff like this, I have to take them. So this wire is going down and around and up and out like this under the board. Same with this one. There was room to make this go down straight down, then up and over. I saw a good enough gap right here. So now if I put the board in place, yes, yes. These cables are going to be nice and hidsa. Question is, what else can we do like that? Front panel connection, maybe. So lettuce and tomato mock up this front panel install to deter mind how we're gonna route this. Why some of this got taken apart the way it did, I don't know. Oh, look at that. The USB header on the front has automatically a 2.0 built onto it. Or no, they just, this thing's super weird. Cause there is a, a 2.0 and a 3.0 on the front. It's just like they've merged the cables together somehow. Unless 3.0 is backwards compatible. That would be ultra smart if that 2.0 connector is hooked up to the 3.0 cable. We only have to plug the one in because I don't see a 2.0 connector anywhere near the 3.0 connector. And yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be running these more under the board because those standoffs are real high. So the underboard area is cavernous. There's lots of room under there to play with. So J front panel is right over here. She got a mesh of schmish. Oh boy, look at all the hard drive LEDs. Yeah, some server cases will do that. Not that it's exactly practical. Power reset, power LED, alarm LED. <laughs> Let's hook up the alarm LED. It'll give him a warning light every time he uses it. How much of these can we peel back without ruining the cable? So that'd be nice if we could hide the extraneous connectors that we don't need. Sure enough, it looks like it, it, it does have enough to span down to the bottom here. They're not clear on the polarity of this alarm LED. Time to bust out the tweezies. Get some sys fan into place. Ooh boy. Ho ho ho. Oh yeah, bud. That's what I'm talking about. Firkin talked, firkin talked, firkin talked, and firkin talked, bud. And firkin talked. These are old school cable management skills. Stuff not a lot of people do anymore because they're too dependent on having the ability to go behind the motherboard tray. You ain't gonna get tips and skills like this and 90% of the other tech YouTube channels out there. A lot of them kids are relatively new to this game. They weren't around back when the only condiments you get for a computer were ketchup and mustard. Now, talking about ketchup and mustard, whatever are we gonna do with this unholy mess? We're not gonna be sure until we get some drives into place. Well, because these standoffs are so tall, it's a great place to strap down. We'll start off there, that cable, and build from there. Now this looks like we can go very circumferential. That's assuming it clears the drive bays. We're gonna have to data mine that. Meanwhile, this ugly pupper here could just get uh, strapped taut. I hope, I hope that that 2.0 communicates through that 3.0 connector. Otherwise, we're gonna have a problem. Either way, he's getting one or the other, but not both. What is this lock? Lock what? There's something supposed to go in there? All right, it appears that this assembly has to slide in from the front, which is why this was removed and why it's now gonna be hard to get in there with the cable management. But at the same time, I don't think this thing ever actually had to be taken out because these, these units, they slide in from the front. And while these guys, that would be tricky with the huge cooler. Mm, key term tricky with the huge cooler. But based on what I'm seeing to lock and unlock the drive base, we got these two screws right here. Yeah, okay, that's how this works. Still hokey, but it makes more sense now. 
Now, one problem I'm finding is drive cooling. There's no real provisions for a fan on the front. All right, so to get this, it's a place that I'm probably gonna have to bring it off the edge of the desk and carefully bend this down like so. We should be able to get drives in and out of here and clear the cooler. There's a little bit of hokey pokey. Well, now we got that roughly in position. We should be able to slot this back on just to keep it safe. Yeah. The screws are a bit too few. Like, yes, you gave me plenty of screws, but uh, we need more screws. Great, I'm gonna have to dip into my private reserve. Oh, that's what these mysterious screws were for. Mmm. I think these little flat black dealies go into the side. Hey, I think these little flat black dealies go into the side panel here like this. Oh, there we go. So what's that say about these guys? I guess those are the flat silver dealies. These guys. Ah, yes. Or are those also supposed to be black? We have a lot of black screws. There are a bunch that go down the bottom here. The best part is that they come in two different lengths. Not sure where the shorter ones are supposed to go. I'm gonna put the longer ones in here so I know we got bite. Sure enough, it doth look like we have enough silver screws for the side panels here. Oh, some are gonna be to put the top on. Well then, we're gonna be running out of these screws right quick and in a hurry. Maybe these are supposed to be black ones too. Okay, I think based on my count, no, there's only three black short ones. We only have four silver ones and there are four to hold the top on. So I think the four silver ones are for the top. Actually, no, we also only have four black short ones. So I think the black long ones, which are all gone now, are in good those positions there. There's something missing. Which ones did I usually initially use for this one? They have a smaller thread pattern. Oh boy. I need to have a sit and think about this. All right, so after much deliberation and exploration, I think I got it figured out. We have six each of the types of screws. Six uh, long black ones, six short black ones, and six silver ones. Now the silver ones have a more uh, fuller screwdriver pattern, which means I can fit a bigger screwdriver into them to make them easier to work with. And that kind of gives us a hint on where they're supposed to go. So two of them are for the uh, the drive bay holder thing block, this guy, because we want to be able to pull those in and out easy. Four of them are for the panel cover, because obviously you want to be able to get that at easy. The rest of the screws, uh, they take a smaller screwdriver, which is non-standard and you're not going to want to work on that. So there are ones that you're intended to put in here and leave in there. And I do believe the four short ones are going to be for the panel cover because short ones are being used to hold other parts of the panel cover on. And then the, sh the long ones are gonna hold the drive cage in place, which makes sense because you want a little bit more load bearing capacity for your drive cage. And then it's gonna match the, uh, the side aesthetic here. Ah, now if only they were easier to work with. So yes, it all makes sense now. Just a case of hammering them in there and then we're pretty much gonna be good to go. All right, this is all starting to come together. Oh, the other thing we have are these uh, front handles. They're gonna go here. Oh, that explains what these four plastic fan mount screws are for. Here I am looking for another fan mount. Thinking, There's no more fan mounts in this. Uh, they're to screw into these handles, aren't they? Ho oh, ho, let's find out. Okay, either they're not or there's something else that we're missing. Oh, what are these? Oh, that's for mounting the CD drives. Ah, okay, we have some uh, back reinforcement bars here. Ah, yes, that makes sense now. So basically how this works is this guy kind of plop in there, which is a good idea, more reinforcement. And then because it's hard to get a screwdriver in there straight, these plastic screws just kind of sloppily slop in there. We can get them started at an angle anyway. Okay, that, that'll do, that'll do. Yeah, in retrospect, I don't know how you would have gotten the motherboard into place had you not taken it all apart. And good news is we'll be able to get the drives in and out the one side. These slots are useless, but that's fine. He's not gonna be loading this up with drives. And I discussed with him the uh, idea of getting a hot swap so that he can swap out drives in the future. That might ultimately be a bit better. So I guess we'll go ahead and get his uh, single solitary pan ultimate drive into place. Just needs to snap in there, bud. Something in the front here. WTF. Oh, you know what? I put the drive in backwards. I got confused. Okay. <laughs> there we go. 
Actually, this retention mechanism isn't that bad once you figure out how it works. And then yeah, a couple screws just hold this in. Now it can't come out. So, blah. I guess we're just jamming remaining cables up in the front here, which is fine, I guess. We pretty much only need a couple SATAs. So kind of knowing that, I wish I had of, uh, you know, maybe bundled these together before. They'll be hanging out in there a little bit loosey-goosey, but that's fine. We'll just zappy-strappy them. Get rid of these twist ties, because they're loosey-goosey. All right, three nice little bundles of joy. Tuck them away up in here. Pretty much out of sight, out of mind. One of these sodas is longer than the other. I guess we might bring the long one around to the front. Wait, there's a Molex on the end of this SATA. Holte then! That's actually kind of handy. I don't do that anymore, but sometimes that can just make or break a cable management. When you just have that one Molex device you need to hook up, but you have to bust out a whole second cable run to do it. Hey, this uh, just slid out on me. Uh, apparently that wasn't bolted down. Nice. Ah, this says lock. It's like there's something that goes into here to make it so that stuff doesn't come back out. And then what are these little tines for? Is there an assembly that's supposed to go there? Oh, that probably just releases it. Ah, uh, yeah. So this goes on just the one side. That guy's gonna pinch into place. So we push this in now. This little bendy bit jams. Something else jams. This case is certainly interesting. No, it's definitely how it goes. It's just a little out of spec is all. Needs a little bit of persuasion. Ah, yeah. And that metal wing pops up into this little thing here, which you would press in to release it. Okay, it's a neat little mechanism. Very, very simple. And Molex flexes downwards, so that's okay. We'll tuck it underneath. Just bring this set of power up here. And I guess we're pretty much good now. I don't want to get one more Zeppa Strepa right in and about here. But Zeppa Strepa, she does not want to go in and about there. Come on now, bud. It's kind of ironic, you know? Do such a nice job cable managing some of the initial starting points, and then we just bomb, just completely drop the ball on the power cables. Oh, sodas are going to be tricky because they're all the way like uh, in there. I wonder what orientation they are. Probably just bog standard kind of straight up and down. I almost feel like if I took this front panel back off, I'd be able to get underneath. That requires taking the handles off again. Nah, if you have to put that much work into connecting the SATA, then it's not gonna be any good for this particular end user because it means it's gonna be difficult for him to reconfigure it. It's a hell of a contour though, I'll tell you what. I really gotta shift my body position just to, come on, where are you? Oh, 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 there we go. Well, that's the CD drive hooked up now. I'll just do that all over again one more time. Wait, I didn't want it that far up. Oh, that was ridiculous. Now you're probably asking, why didn't I just use these SATA ports that are easy to get at, bud? Because they're easy to get at. Do the difficult stuff now so that if he wants to reconfigure it later, it'll be easy to get at. I guess we just shuck this pupper in there. They only give you pull-out pieces. So now there's an open hole there. Oh well. All right, so getting the cover on now. The concern is it's not gonna fit over this. It's definitely not gonna fit over that. Heh, heh, heh. Not even close, bud. Yeah. So by what margin are we off here? Yeah. At least a quarter of an inch. So that's the question now. If I pull off this shroud, which really I doubt serves much functional purpose, how tall is the cooler actually, and will we be able to get the cover on? Mm, I don't know, my gut's saying no go. All right, what do we got here? Uh-huh, then uh, those are stuck there. How about these plastic caps? No, those plastic caps don't come off, is that what you're saying? I need a straight edge. Ooh, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. It's like this would clear. If these plastic caps weren't on the top of these guys, it would clear. But the plastic cap off there, no go. Oh, it just, just, just won't clear. Okay, it is what it is. He asked me to cut a hole in the top of this thing, which isn't happening today. Hopefully the weekend, if it's nice and uh, warm out, I'm gonna be taking a grinder to that top panel. Uh, I am thinking though, we can minimize the size of the hole by removing these top. I feel like I ended that sentence anticlimactically. So will this clear? Yes. 
So if I get rid of these plastic top caps, which is fine, and then just bolt this cover on, if I can cut a hole just perfectly this square here, well, until I get an SSD, I can't really continue on this system. And until I get that cover on, I can't really thermally tune on this system. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a two-parter. And if you're curious to find out more about this guy, then you're gonna have to stay tuned and find out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this. A little computer building, made it adequately cavernous in here. But I am curious, get this thing fired up, run some benchmarks, see what she, she can do.